My new online course is out and on sale. It's called Deeper Worship Lyrics, and it's designed specifically for the worship songwriter. To celebrate the launch, we're going through my 10 commandments of worship songwriting. One video per day of great tips and tricks to help you as a songwriter. Even if you didn't buy the course, but just took all 10 principles and put them into practice, I guarantee you, your song would get better, your lyrics would be more punchy, and you would communicate with your audience more deeply. All right, let's take a look at commandment number four. All right, yesterday's commandment, number five, use strong verbs and cut adjectives and adverbs. Today's commandment, number four, if you coddle a pet lyric, your song will suffer. So let's talk about what a pet lyric is. Here's a lyric I wrote. I will choose to run the race upon this narrow road, and I cannot be bought because I am already sold. Hmm. What's the problem there? Well, We want to tell a story in our lyric. We want to take the listener through something so that in their imagination, a storyline is unfolding. Look at my setup. I will choose to run the race upon this narrow road. Okay, so we have a race, we have a road. The verse would lead you to believe that we're going to keep talking about races and roads and, and et cetera, et cetera. But look what I did. And I cannot be bought because I am already sold. Well, that's a cute turn of a phrase, but it has nothing to do with the storyline that I started with. We were talking about races and roads, and then all of a sudden we're talking talking about bought and sold. I just gave you whiplash because, as it turns out, I must have liked this last lyric too much to let it go. I should have kept up the idea of the, the narrow road and the race. I should have enlarged that imagery. Instead, I jumped ship, and I... I had this totally unrelated thought, but I thought it was so cute that I left it in. That's the problem, is that pet lyrics draw attention to themselves, right? They're like, oh, <clears throat> did you see how clever I was just then? We're like, yeah, but, but it, didn't, it didn't serve the song. It didn't move your storyline forward. Oh, but it was really clever. Well, it doesn't matter. The part, and that is the, the pet lyric, detracts from the whole. Your verse would have been much stronger if you would have kept on your narrow road idea rather than going to a pet lyric. So now now it, it has this weird thing where the first part of your lyric was basically just a reason to rhyme with your pet lyric. It, it, was, a, it was a bad setup. And now we just expect everybody to be interested in your cute pet lyric. So if at any point you wrote a lyric and you say, oh, that was so clever what I just did, stop dead in your tracks, pride comes before a fall, and think to yourself, did I actually make this lyric better? Did it make sense? Did I stay with my metaphor or did I jump ship to go and find this cute lyric that I really liked and I like it so much that I can't get rid of it, right? If there's a lyric that you can't get rid of because you think it's so good, it's probably the thing that's messing up your song. So remember... If you coddle a pet lyric, your song will suffer. Thanks for watching. And remember, there's much more available in my full course, Deeper Worship Lyrics. It's on sale now, but only until the end of the countdown. So click on the link nearby to learn more about the course. All right, God bless and goodbye.